Okay, good evening. Uh, should be approximately 7 p.m. on the east coast of the USA. And it's February 20th, 2019. Good every, good, good, good every. <laughs> good evening, everybody. Uh, morning or afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, I got Ron on with me so he can help me read the chat room. Yes, sir. And uh, so I got three uh, from last week that I'm going to get moving tonight on the inking. I did a little bit of penciling on them this afternoon in between other things. So I've got a, a bullseye. Um, this is a character from Paper Girls. Her name is Cam. And yeah, she's got a little uh, little headset on. Um, and uh, smoking a, a little cigarette. And then going to be doing another Punisher. And I'm still working out a little bit of the details on him. I'm playing with the lighting a bit. And uh, I, think I, I think I almost got it, but I might try. Uh, I think I'm going to dial it in a little bit closer in some areas before I hit the inking on this, just so that I got a nice black and white balance. So anyway, that's what's going on. Um, hello, Modern Sounds. How are you doing? I believe this is the first time I've seen your name in the chat, so welcome. I'm John Beatty, and uh, the other voice you will hear from time to time, either asking me questions or reading, is my buddy Ron. So, I think I'm going to get started with Bullseye, and I need to get some ink out. Uh, I was running a little bit late. I went home and wound up, as usual, having to run a few errands. Uh, maybe some of you all can relate, right, Ron? Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, you got Michael Brooks in the room. He said, ooh, excited. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Uh this might be his, uh, the bullseye, I believe, is Michael Brooks' um, piece. Let me check my little black book. And I want to say thank you for the people today who uh, filled out the sketch ops, uh, both the early one and the late one. I've got everybody in the book from earlier today, but like I said, I was... The 6 p.m. ones I have to put in either later tonight or tomorrow morning. Uh, yep, this, no, wait, Mike Brooks is, uh, he's got the Punisher. Mike, let me show you this Punisher I got going in. Maybe you didn't get a good look. See what I'm doing. We're kind of looking up at him. I got light coming down and kind of from the side. And this will be his skull in here. So we get like a diagonal and we're going to cut the whites and, uh, we're probably going to do some splatter tonight. Good evening, David. It's Ken. It's not Bullet Ken. Head. That's it's right. Ken. I, I was trying to remember. Yeah. <laughs> well, the there's Ken's another. Here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, oh, thanks. Thanks, Michael. Glad you like it. Um, uh, there's another Ken, and he's actually over in uh, the Central Florida area, and he ordered a, a sketch op uh, tonight, and uh, that that's Ken Carson. So um, I asked Ken Carson the other night, was he the same Ken? I didn't know if, you know, sometimes people have more than one ID, and nope, so we got two Kens. So I, I try to keep them... Uh, Keep them uh, accurate now as to which kin is is which. Ken says the angle is very cool. All right. So this is a uh, a bullseye, like I said, and it's a. Uh, I can't, I, well, I can't say I never did, well, I never did Bullseye in a comic that I remember, but I did do a very small head sketch. Uh, somebody was doing, um, I think it was a Daredevil sketch cover. 
and um, they had me do a bullseye, a small remark. And I mean, it was small. It was maybe an inch by an inch. So, um, you know, like just a little bit more than postage stamp size. But that's all the guy was wanting was uh, he was wanting to fill that thing up with as many people as he could at the convention. Well, Michael says he's casting for the family to watch. No pressure. Oh. All right. Well. I hope they enjoy it. Um, and uh, I hope they, they get some entertainment out of seeing your piece done. Uh, are you going to be around for a while, Mike? Uh, if they're younger kids, I could maybe try to work on it. I was going to get warmed up on Bullseye here. But if you've got little ones that need a bedtime, I definitely understand. Well, Mike said you're good. No rush. Take your time. All right. Appreciate that. And I don't know if uh, some of you all saw my son Jacob putting on his uh, concert. <laughs> did, did you happen to see that on Facebook last night, uh, Ron, or today? I didn't. <laughs> I, I don't follow Facebook. All right. I just started Twitter. You should have put it on Twitter. Well, <laughs> it was one of those ones where it was a Facebook Live. Nope. And boy... It was funny because usually, you know, before we do it, I'll kind of instruct him, okay, you know, do this, do that or whatever, you know, don't forget to say who you are. And, uh, I started recording so that he wouldn't jump the gun. Cause when I say, okay, we're live, it, it takes a few seconds, as you know, from doing YouTube to actually go live. And, uh, he was talking something about, uh, I'm, I'm licking my fingers because some professional rock stars or pop stars do that. Right, daddy? Because they need to keep their fingers wet or something. And I was just like, I was just laughing inside. And then I finally told himself, he, he like put his finger in his mouth and popped it out. And I said, Jacob, you know, we're live. And he's like, what? He goes, we, we can't show that or something. But what really impressed me was, um, he's, He's really into that Imagine Dragons uh, group. And I guess, from what I understand, they did some music for uh, at least Ralph Rex, the Internet. I don't know if they were involved on the first one. And um, he picked it up somewhere. And he actually knows, like, almost all the lyrics uh, to this song called Believer. And it's, like, it's pretty... <laughs> it's pre It's... It's kind of weird when you hear a six-year-old kid like start, and he's got this little Paw Patrol guitar, and he was strumming it like in good rhythm, and he sounded good. You're gonna have to uh, have Lori dial that up for you. I will uh, look back on it myself. Yeah, yeah. I I think you'll get a kick out of it. I think we're going to have some, uh, since it's so popular, I think maybe both Dare, 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 Daredevil, Bullseye, 
and the Punisher will probably get a little splatter treatment. Um, I don't think Cam will need any. Splatter is the artist friend. It's it's a showstopper. Everyone likes a splatter. Every you're you're really modulating high there, Ron. You're you're coming in very loud. I don't know if you upped your volume, but I did it. Is that better? I was just excited about the splatter. Yeah. <laughs> I'm now I'm trying to talk softly. Ken said splatter. Yeah. Splatter is like uh it's like a magic trick, you know? It's like, ooh yeah, bring the splatter. That's why it was cool uh the other night, um, when I got to do Ghost Rider and, and Thanos with the splatter, you know, both of them and Ghost Rider had the double dose. It's kinda of like the double dutch. <laughs> Get that song stuck in your head. Oh, why did I say that? It's on you. It is. That's get on the bus, the double Dutch bus. Do you remember that song, Ron? Thankfully, no. Nope. Ah. I think that's one that I could get Zablo stuck on. Speaking of Zablo, in his honor, I think we've been watching, uh, trying to catch up on the Rocky movies. Oh, yeah. Lower, lower never seen them. So we watched uh, one Rocky movie a night. Wow. So the next time uh, we have uh, free time, we're going to catch on to Rocky 4. That's where we're at. I'm trying to think. Did I see four? Oh, that was the uh, Tommy Gunn one, right? No, no, that was the Dolph Lundgren. The Russian. He goes to Russia and fight. He trains in like Siberia or something. So, wait a minute. Which one had had John Wayne's kid in it or whatever? Five. I thought five was just the Rocky Balboa story. That was six. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So uh, Ken said the gray and white on Ghost Rider really worked out well. Yeah. Michael Brooks says that Ghost Rider is amazing. He loves the shadow with the flames. Well, thank you. I appreciate the compliments. Uh... They're what helped me sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, if I sound distracted, I am researching. I'm researching if John has ever done Bullseye. So, I'm looking through all the villains and Secret Wars to see if he ever popped up there for a minute. I don't think he did. You might find that sketch on uh, if you do a Google search, though. Although, I think I did another one, come to think of it. Um, a bigger one, now that I'm kind of remembering. But this was a cool choice when it came in uh, last week. I liked. Uh, I liked it. Anything different is a cool choice. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. I'm still trying to figure out. Uh, Ashley gave me artist choice, and I'm. I'm thinking like, well, you know, if it were me, of course I would do Captain America, but she has a Captain America, so can't really, you know. Can't really double up on her there, but she didn't get a Spider-Man. And I, you know what? Ever since that Spider-Man movie, I've been enjoying uh, doing Spider-Man. I'll be right back. Phone call. Okay. I tell you, I can't keep help. <laughs> I I can't keep a helper in the room. I understand, though. Ron is an extremely busy guy, and he kind of has to be on call for certain things. So,
Sorry about that. It's all right. I was just explaining to the people that I can't keep help. You can't. You keep running them off. <laughs> but I told them that indeed you were a very uh, a busy person yourself, and that you you had to take certain calls. Yeah. So Ken is kind of surprised that Bullseye never crossed the path with Cap, and I, I agree with him there. Yeah, um, you know, Bullseye was one of those characters that, again, uh, you know, I think in the 80s, you know, Miller took a lot of these characters when he got on Daredevil, and I don't know if it was him or... Um, can't remember was it i want to say it was roger stern that may have been writing when he first started but then when he got the the keys to the writing um he really started to explore some of the i i would say kind of more obscure characters and he brought some interest to them that other people hadn't so You know, Miller also did a a one shot book of, I think it was the Punisher and Doctor Octopus. It was like the weirdest thing. It was very weird. That would be interesting. Um, if I remember correctly, it could have been Spider Man had to be in there. I'm sure. Um, but I remember the art being very rushed looking on both Frank's part and Klaus who inked it. Uh, and I don't know if it was, it may have been towards that change where Miller was, y you know, paring his work down, simplifying it. I mean, it still has this, this nice energy to it. So I'm not bagging on it. I'm just saying it, it, it was kind of like, uh, if you saw it, you would, you know, and you probably can see some of it online. Um, it's it's kind of where he started to transition into a more simplistic uh, uh, style in many ways and, and concentrate more on his storytelling. wonder if my phone's going to hold out. Hold out from what? Uh, just from... It's at 45%. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> don't be that sure. I don't know. It's Even my iPad, which is just a year old from December... Uh, Let's see, is it at a hundred? Yeah, okay, it's finally at a hundred percent. I've had it on the charger all day now. Granted, I do have that set to like never turn off unless I shut it or put the cover down. So if it's if it's on, if I if I happen to open it, open it <clears throat> because I got tired of it shutting off, um, needing it for reference, you know, it would go dark on me. Um, I decided to just have it like where it was always uh, open because there was there were a few times I was using it for reference and it went dark and when I would touch it it would either you know lose the reference for me I'd have to try to find it again or one of those things that's kind of the drawback of touch screens or at least for me is that you touch them, they react. Oh, Ismail is here. He put up a bullseye. Ismail, how are you doing?
Welcome to the stream. Ken said, it looks like that was amazing annual 15, Miller and Jansen with Doc Ock. Yep, that would be it. And uh, I had black and white uh, photocopies of it, so it was kind of cool back in the day where you could go into Marvel and if you saw a job in one of the editor's flat files, you could ask them, hey, could I, could I go make a set of copies of this? And they didn't care. You know, they, they were like, yeah, just, you know, they knew who left with them. You just had to make sure you got them, brought, got them back to the editor. In one piece. Yeah, exactly. Um, I remember there were, you know, there were a few jobs in there that uh, um, it it may have happened with uh, Punisher number one that, that Zach and I did. Um, you know, people coming in and wanting to make copies of the finished pages, you know, so that they could have full-size uh, first generation copies uh, to study from. So, you know, it was not an uncommon thing. Um, and it, like I said, it, it, it was fun to be able to, you know, have that stuff at full size and be able to study it. Well, you did well with opening your spots today. I missed out. They moved fast. Yeah, did good. Um, we'll shut them down now. Uh, till I till I get uh, these are from last week, and I took the others for next week. So I've got uh, I think two or three more after this on this grouping and then i've got 10 so i try to average two to three um a session and so i figure that you know that average does averages to about two a day unless i do three and three so i move through them fairly quick and it when i can't stream certain things and it it at least gives me something to stream And it's fun because people get to see a start and finish, um, which I always like on, you know, more than one piece, too. Oh, Ken said he missed out again. Uh-oh. Well. It's always next week. Well, I have, you know, I, and I, I, I have it set up. I have a third op set up on my shop and depending on you know if i have enough people of interest i will i will do that but i'll probably wait to the weekend or at least the end of the week and just see if uh you know if people want to i don't want to i don't want to like you know oversaturate or or get too many too fast so um you know that's something that if if the interest is there if enough people m missed out then uh maybe i will but i don't want to get like really far behind either so Well, I like looking for a challenge for you, and I think I found one. Oh, yeah? What's that? Matic. What's that? The uh, Captain American villain. Uh, it's like the just the face with the little arms and the... Oh, 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 MODOK. 
Modoc. Yeah, Modoc. Modoc's cool. I actually, uh, <laughs> this guy had a great idea. Uh, he he had a Modoc collection, but he, and I guess he still does. But the 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 neat thing about it is, he would assign an artist. Well, he would kind of ask you if you were interested, uh, and doing it in a kind of uh, a style. And if you Google like probably John Beatty Modoc, you'll come up with mine, and it's in like a Alphonse Mucha style. I went out and got the blue paper, and it's got some uh, white pencil on it. It's got like a Art Nouveau uh, border. All right. You should be able to find it. I'm, I'm already on it. That looks cool. Did you see it? Yeah, the, the blue. Yeah. With and the it's lettering got, name yeah. below it. Yep. That is cool. And uh, what I did with that, you know, I, I and I asked him if it was okay if I did it. Um, I, I did the design work in Adobe Illustrator and printed it out onto the colored paper. So even the lettering was a font. Um, but if I remember correctly, isn't there like some white uh, highlighting or shading or something in the in the lettering or inside of it or something? White oh, pencil. Yes. Yep. There were, yeah, there was some white pencil and some white ink or, or pen or something also going on in that. That was a fun piece, and like I said, he had this crazy collection, so that was like the, you know, the ones where he was getting people to do like a, a Mooka inspired Modoc, and that was a fun idea. That was something, you know. That looks like it's back to the drawing board. <laughs> Now I know just to Google your name with whatever character I'm going to try to stump you with. Yeah. Make sure you haven't already done it. <laughs> Excuse me. So what would you say is your favorite uh, Daredevil villain? Um. Well, do we count Kingpin? I would he, think so. I mean, he originally, again, was, you know, Spider-Man, but I... I don't even really associate him with Spider-Man. So, I, I, you know, I, 
it's weird. I because I I kind of consider Kingpin and and uh, and Bullseye kind of partners. Due to the storylines, I think King, Kingpin like used Bullseye to go after Daredevil, didn't he? If I remember the stories correctly. I can't say from the stories. I'm not positive. I yes. know it was that way in the show. Right. But I think they borrowed. So, see, that, that would be something that... I mean, I remember when they came out. So, but... Well... I don't remember, or, I, or I'd be able to tell you, yeah, I'm a little foggy on that. <laughs> Get it? I'm a little foggy on that? I, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see? So I'm a little foggy on that detail. But I will say this. If, if Zablo is here, he, he would remember. But uh, I do believe that the kingpin... Uh, was kind of, um, I'll say, using Bullseye as like his uh, assassin after, um, well, you know, then there's Electra, and there's so many good ones. Even, it, it was just like that time period, and I, this was when Frank was, Frank Miller was only writing the book, and David Mazzucchelli was drawing it, there was a vulture storyline and it's like all these characters that I really had no interest in suddenly they were interesting because of the story and art. And I remember going into Ralph Macchio's office when that, that story that has, it's got a splash page and you would know it if, if you saw it of just, it's like the vulture on a rooftop or something. It's just a beautiful piece of work. And, and that was like just, you know, it was just out on his flat files. Like, you know, here it is. And, you know, it was gorgeous. But you don't think about anything, you, you know, because you're used to going into the editor's office. Uh, just seeing artwork like, you know, laying on the desk or on top of flat files or something. So it's like it's it's not unusual. But when I think back at it now, I'm like, geez. You know, who knew, right? You know, I mean, that that stuff's so valuable now. Um, but back in the day, it was just, you know, you're just doing work. Well, thinking of it as just work, is there any that you've done just work that you wish you still had a little bit of it as a keepsake? Um, well, yeah, I, I, I regret selling this stuff that I did so fast, but you just, I don't know. It's, it's weird because I didn't see a ton of value in it in the long run. You know, I didn't, I mean, I guess that's kind of the catch 22 if you would have, um, or if I would have, or if anybody would have, uh, it would the people that sold their art would have held on to it um especially in that 80s time period you know it's like uh i know that like one of the best terry austin kept like everything he got back you know very rarely did he let a page out i think mostly he would uh give them out as a gift or something every now and again but i'm pretty sure that uh and he still may have this stuff. I don't know if he ever let go of it or what, but I mean, he has all the burn X-Men stuff, some of the key covers. I, I, I believe, and I could be telling stories out of school. And if I am, I apologize in advance, but I think he has that, the cover that everyone, uh, the Wolverine and Kitty pride cover with all the wanted posters. I think he owned that cover. And I think that's like, the most coveted cover of the people that collect that um, that era of X Men art. Good for him. <laughs> well, if he still has it, like I said, he may have finally got that offer 
you know, that had him part with it. But yeah, you know, uh, he kind of just kept the stuff and I don't know. I had a different, I mean, the last piece of artwork that I sold that Zek and I did was uh, Cap 321, and that's the Cap with the Uzis. And that was, of all things, uh, I think I needed to raise some money for taxes. And I, 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 I cringe every time I think about selling it for the pal for the paltry sum of three hundred and fifty dollars. That's the one in my office rent that uh, Ron mm -hmm. that I have. I put print Ron and print together and came up with rent. <laughs> that's the one. That's the one that I have the print of in my office, the black and white. Yep. So using the old Pelican ink? Yeah, I've I've kind of went back to it, and I ordered uh, I ordered three more little one ounce bottles because uh, this big one that's uh, eight, almost eight and a half uh, ounces. It's it's still got quite a bit in it, um, and it. Uh, that's why I kind of went back to it because I like the consistency of it. It's really, you know, I I tried a bunch of different inks, and like I said, I I kind of put this away for a while, and I pulled it out um, sometime like maybe this month, early in the month when I was doing these, and or actually it may have been when I went to the PM drawing things when I was doing the daily draw when I was trying to keep that up and uh, the first thing I wanted to do though was see if it was waterproof and it's you know it always says so on the label but the real test of that is putting water on it once it's dried and and it was fine so I think I stopped using it because uh, well it, but here's the thing Copics seem to lift up any ink um, when you color with the markers. But once I once I went to watercolor and stuff, 
Um, I had better luck even with like uh, that pit artist pin. Um, I remember just testing out a color or a gray wash on a scrap piece and it didn't lift it or move it at all, which really kind of surprised me. So seems like uh, watercolor and ink wash is kind of, you know, I, I like being able to control markers more, but I think I'm over that now. As I've said, I, I had that, I, I think I finally had that reckoning that watercolor is supposed to dance around and move and, and blend its own way. And me being a bit of a control freak with uh, how I want stuff to react, I, I finally just one day said, you know, I'm, I'm using something that I know is supposed to work one way, but I'm trying to make it work another way. That was even on one of my streams, I think. I just finally was like, you know, I think it was on the one I did for Dr. Kaz, that big background, where I was trying to get it all the same shade of orange. And I was just like, it, it's not going to happen. You know, it's like, I can't use a brush big enough. And even if I did, it's still going to have these little imperfections. That piece did turn out awesome. Yeah. No, it, 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 it kind of enlightened me doing a, a background that big and then just realizing that the beauty of it was it's you know that's the way it's supposed to be so after that i kind of it it, it was like one of those moments where you finally you know you're fighting it you're fighting it you're fighting it and then you realize you know what this is the way it's meant to be and i'm i've been trying to put the square peg in the round hole AG left an interesting comment um, on the Mike Zek thing where, you know, he said he was going to be interested in seeing my take on David Finch because, uh, you know, I was saying I'm probably going to approach it. Even though David's pencils are tight, I, I, you know, I, I think mine will have a different look than the real machined uh, hard line. I think I'll have a little bit of some softness in there that maybe, you know, maybe he'll like, maybe he won't like. Uh, and like I said, if, if once I'm done, I don't like it, I can always go back and re-ink it and just go the safe route. But I really don't want to do that. I want to, you know, I, I, I kind of want to have that experience of <clears throat> doing his, doing that ink job for the Inkwell Awards uh, in a way that is, well, different. I'm sad that's not going to be a hero con this year. Yeah, uh, I don't know what happened there. Um, I don't know if if they just decided, you know, hey, we, we need to change times or, or what. Uh, But it was, I you know, I I never went into the event because I was always busy, but they would always have the awards ceremony. Um, so I think it's, I think it's going to be at the East Coast Comic Con this year, which I was at the last couple of years, but won't be at this year. So Ken asks, what Finch piece will you be inking? Um, it's a Batman cover. And I I believe if you Google it, like Inkwell Awards David Finch Batman cover, something like that, you'll see it. I don't think, I, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to show it or not. So I, I'd rather not. On the webpage does have a uh, thumbnail that yeah, you can see that they posted. 
<clears throat> and then they're going to, uh, David Finch will sign all those and then they're going to auction them off on eBay for, uh, for the Inkwell, um, awards because they're a nonprofit. So that won't be something that, you know, I'll be able to sell. It's, it, it goes to them, which is fine. But it's like I was saying in that cast, and I don't know if you heard me, Ron, that, you know, the one, the one that Jim Lee did, the Superman cover, which was, you know, something that was used before. It's just, you know, I looked at them and it was just like, okay, you know, you'd see a little bit of difference, but pretty much they were interchangeable. I've noticed that. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, a few lines here or there. You know, other than that, there was no... And, and you know, I mean, I'm I'm talking now, but when I get to Finch's stuff, I may freeze up and go, you know what, I'm just going to follow what he's got. So maybe I should just uh, close my big mouth and, and do the piece first and see how I like it. Because if you see mine and it looks uh, it looks like everyone else's and there's not any uh, real, you know, there were a few things I was telling you, and I don't want to play my whole hand, but I was telling you in, in confidence that, that I could see, you know, um, playing around with that, that could possibly, um, you know, that I haven't seen anybody do with his work. And actually, I was going to start with those backgrounds, but I feel like if I'm going to change anything as far as style-wise and the fact that it's not going to be so rigid and mechanical is I, I should work on the figure first. I was going to do the backgrounds first, but then I'm like, well, if I spend all that time on the backgrounds and then the figure isn't where I want it, then what? You know, <laughs> so. I think I'm going to work a little bit on the figure and I'll be able to tell if the direction is going to work that I want to take. And if I can feel it, um, not moving in that direction, then I'll, I'll be the chicken and move, move on. Hey, you know, ha we, we haven't seen, and I haven't seen, uh, our buddy, uh, Steven, in a in a long while, after after the Patriots won, he kind of left. Uh, he, he came in, you know, let us know how bad our he, Dolphins were, and <laughs> he came in and gloated. Uh, he's probably dealing with uh, twenty feet of snow up there. Yeah, I I think even uh, Alabama and some other kind of semi-southern states got a little snow, didn't they? Or they're having bad weather. I know that. I seen uh, Washington getting a bunch of snow today. D.C. Yeah. Or Jacob. Jacob. Yeah, I know. Wrong time. <laughs> Although I don't think he likes the cold weather as much as he thought he did. I think he's having a change of heart. But I also think it's kind of one of those things where you go from like we did from 80 something degrees to 50 like a 30 de 30 degree drop overnight So were you able to find out anything about your uh, hotel for Heroes Con? Uh, yeah, I actually got an email 
uh, back from the girl that handles that stuff. In fact, I didn't reply to her now that you mentioned that. And yeah, she said she could get me over at that Hilton. The Embassy Suites? Uh, is that what it was? The one right behind it? Is that what we found out? Uh, there was. They were both owned by uh, Hilton. There was the Embassy Suites Hilton and the Garden Hilton. Yeah, I'm not sure which one. It's just um, because they're still booking the Westin. Mm-hmm. Ray like Dogs it. in the house. He says, "What is up, Smooth Johnny B?" Yo, yo, Bill. Just uh, doing my thing, man. How you? How are you doing? You still, uh, you still slinging ink for Aspen there? I think that's what he was doing last we talked. He said, I'm not doing all they say I am doing, but I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> well, what do they say you're doing? If you if you can or want to expand on that. What gets me is I would imagine you're probably a better pencil artist than the person you're inking. And he says, yes, I am still inking for Antarctic Press. Well, all right. Richard is here now. He says, what character have you never worked on professionally that you really want to? Hmm. Oh, boy. Uh, let's see. That might, that might take a, a long think. Because <laughs> I got lucky. My favorite, my two favorite characters are uh, Bat uh, Batman is number two captain america is number one i always liked the punisher and i got to do him so i got my big three out of the way and i had good runs on them uh <sighs> i'm trying to think you know i did did superman work but i was never a big superman fan Um, I like Wolverine, but I, I don't know if he would be somebody that, that I could see myself working on long-term. Uh, I really liked the Wolverine book that came out. Um, it was probably, probably in the nineties. When uh, when it first started out, I think John Buscema was doing breakdowns and and Klaus Jansen was inking and then Bill Sienkiewicz took over working over uh, Buscema's layouts, which all that stuff was beautiful. Al Williamson was doing it too. 
he may be started. That stuff was just gorgeous. Um, so that that's actually one of those things that I love more in black and white. Uh, I would like to find those essentials and be able to purchase them or to be able to, I, I really think that that stuff is a lot stronger in black and white than, than color. Um, and I also think the newsprint kind of is nice on it. So Wolverine might be, maybe even Nick Fury, because uh, I'm a fan of Steranko. So uh, I think Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., would be a fun series to, to work on. Let me see if I can't get this kink worked out of this brush. It has a little split in it that I'm not liking before I do this line up the other side of his head. The other stuff's fine. It's this... Let me see on the actual paper. Well, going back to Bill, he said, I uh -huh. got warrants. He says, well, I'm fixing stuff as I ink. <laughs> I believe that. They should just hire Billy to pencil and ink it. Be done with it. Sometimes you just got to get in there and and do what you got to do, right, Mr. Bill? That's what your mother told me last night. <laughs> hey, Zablo showed up. You know, I left Jared a, a phone message today. I guess he's got some weird excuse. He didn't even text back and say, Hey, sorry I missed your call. I'll get in touch with you. I I actually, um, I'd called him because I think I'm going to be doing a comic book convention in Muscle Shoals, uh, Alabama in November. And I don't know how close that is to him. But I told him, you know... It, I'm going to try to see if I can't, and, you know, he may even buy one if, I told him, I said, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I might be able to get you a table, and if he can just make the drive, if it's an hour, hour and a half away or whatever, uh, just let him crash in the room. It sounds like it'd be a fun time. Yeah. Except I told him he's got to keep his clothes on this time. <laughs> you know how he gets after he eats German food. Uh, let's see. So, uh, Billy said you actually inked Nick Fury over Butch. I don't know if I say this right. Butch Guise? Guys. Guys. Yeah, that's that's one of those tough ones when you see it you you're you're not sure.
and the kidney lady knows I'm streaming, so <clears throat> short of an emergency. <laughs> I I do I run? She'll be texting any moment. Yeah. Uh I told her, I said, you know, one one time we need to get you on here and but then I I had that second thought like mm, maybe not. I think she's better off one of those characters that never comes on the show. Because she'll talk all about me and stuff, you know. She'll let out too many, too many secrets that need need to be like just, yeah, like things that don't really matter. But you know, she she thinks they're great, you know. <laughs> when you were eleven and you got yourself stuck in your zipper. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, I was like. I'm the one that did this. And don't you remember the time when I had to, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like. Ray dog says, I have a Marvel character two page spread that I want to show you. All right. Uh, hey, uh, Billy, shoot me an email. Um, I got to find out something tomorrow. Uh, shoot me an email at john at com. You, you, I think you should have it, but in case you don't, it's uh, it should be in the show more below, or you should have it. But you can, if you got a scan of it or what you've been doing, I'd like to see it. And uh, let me, uh, I want to check on something. I just had a thought, which, <laughs> insert joke, wherever. I just had a thought. Yeah, I finally had one. I finally had that elusive thought I've been looking for all my life. Dare I ask, what was it? Oh, uh, no, it was something that I got to check with somebody else about. And I haven't heard from Billy in a while, except through these streams. So it would, uh, I haven't, haven't really had a chance to get over and be social with my Orlando crew in a long time. We should, uh, we should plan some sort of little get together lunch or something. Billy, do you ever see T dog or anybody else over there anymore? Or is it pretty much, uh, you know, I know he's got kids and stuff like that, and things are going on, so I don't expect it to be like the old days. To George Sturdy you ever, you know, it'd be, it, we got a bunch of people over there. It'd be kind of nice to have a little reunion get together. Boink. Okay. Up. Oh, almost forgot. Still got a little more of this brush to go. Let me dry it out a little bit. Did you go on to Instagram today? Uh, I may have this morning. Why? Why Trebek? <laughs> so McFarland posted up one of his covers that Batman in front of the moon. 
Oh, no, but I think I saw that on Facebook. Okay, about those two mistakes. Mm, it was one of his? Yes, and he pointed out his mistakes, and I had never seen them until he uh, put it out there. And now I'll never be able to unsee them. Is it from, like, Batman Year 2, that one cover, or...? I remember seeing a McFarlane cover, and I didn't read about it. Do you do you do you want to expand on it, or do you think it would be a uh, people should? No, I, I sure will. I'm just scrolling down to the exact cover. He posted it up on his uh, his account. Batman four twenty three. Okay, is that the one where the he's the capes all around the girl? Yes. Okay, so that was a Batman year two or something cover, wasn't it? I, I don't know. It says Batman four twenty three. Okay. Like and the mistakes were coloring issues. Uh, one spot of the moon by Batman's head is white instead of yellow. And one part over by the cape is red instead of yellow. Ah. Uh -huh. But that wasn't his fault, right? No, 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 not at all. Just on the cover, though, he pointed out these mistakes, and I had never paid attention to that before. Hmm. Like, as many I, times as I've seen this cover, I never saw those two. Right. Well, that's interesting. I uh, wait. Well,. It's kind of one of those things where uh, could you see where the colorist might be confused or is it visible that they may have, you know. Oh, no, it's, it's visible now. It's like, oh, wow, okay. No, but I mean, like, could you imagine, like, if you were the colorist not knowing what it was? I mean, is it? Because, you know, that, that cape on that cover, I know the cover, it's kind of wild, and it could be like, well, what's this? You know, the colors could be like, I don't, nope. you know. Because it's it's part of the curved circle, and it just follows the whole shape of it. Like, you'll see it. Oh, I will. You're right. <laughs> I will see it. Kaz is in the house. He says, it sounds like you're having a conversation with Bullseye. Yes. Yes, we are. We are, uh, we're talking about that circle where it was colored incorrectly according to Todd. Todd, we trust. Well, you know that's why I say because some of the, some of his stuff got a little wild. I, I here's what I you know I always liked the way he did capes. They don't make sense. You can't like connect them, but they were always very dynamic. So I kind of just like went with it, went along for the ride, and said, you know what, it it does not work, but it works on a level of it looks cool. So <laughs> you know. You're, you're not going to hear me complain that it's like, oh, that would never work and stuff because, okay, you know, a lot of stuff in comics would never work. Well, he had the perfect reply to a comment. Someone said, thanks, at Todd McFarland. Now we can never not see them. And he said, Todd replied, I just wanted to ruin this cover for everyone else. <laughs> yeah. How, how many years has he been seeing it, you know? says he just sent it to you. Yeah, I, I saw, I, I got my phone alert. I saw where he had sent something in. I'll have to look at that later.
So he asks, by the way, I missed the last five to seven minutes of chat. What did you say? <laughs> said that. Billy. Billy did? Oh, we were just talking about the McFarland cover that was colored wrong. And he finally pointed it out to everybody. And I'm sure there were some people that probably knew about it. Oh, I'm certain. I guess he figured... Like he said, he, you know, now everybody else can see the the mistakes that he's been seeing. And, you know, it is funny because when you do work and, and you see it printed and then either something's maybe redrawn, like with a lot of Secret Wars stuff, or colored wrong, you know, where they misinterpret like what something is, you do cringe and... But there's nothing you can do at that point. I mean, the, I, I think the biggest, you know, one of the biggest horrors that, it, well, we still live with it today, Zach and I do, is the Punisher miniseries. It, you know, it was, it was always going to be five, even though some of the internet stories say that it was expanded to a fifth issue after the success but no it was always going to be five but that was something marvel had never done yet they were always doing four so they had that that paste up thing made for you know number one in a four issue miniseries and stuff so they slapped it on that first cover and uh you know went to press with it nobody caught it until it came out and I know Mike was one of the first people when he saw it, he called up the editor and they got it correct for the next couple of issues. And then on issue four, it says like number four in a four issue series. So we, we do have people come up to us at conventions and ask us about, you know, what, what happened. And it was just, you know, oversight. The, the other thing that kills me about that project is <clears throat> the amount of work that Mike and I were putting in the first one got totally squashed due to, uh, it was my understanding, this is the way I remember it, um, you know, they, they were not, and, and this was kind of, you know, like common back then when you were doing a mini series they weren't even supposed to print or schedule the first one until you know because there were like four until you you were working maybe on the third one or even the fourth that way it ensured that they would be on time and that you could you know have your time on it um but they also and, and i don't know what the difference is now uh, maybe it's because everything, although I don't know if their press is, if they switched out to digital, I guess they probably have by now. Um, you would buy press time. And if you didn't have a book to go on that press time, you just ate like tens of thousands of dollars. And so that's why they always had a fill in in house, uh, either being worked on or one in the drawer done for like every comic so that if something happened and that monthly book was going to be delayed, they could put that fill in immediately in there and not, not lose money. And so my understanding is that's kind of what happened is something was going to not fill that void and we had we weren't even done with the first one we were close uh if you looked at the first one at the end uh mike actually did some inking on it he did some background work he did some figure work a little bit bob mcleod inked a few pieces here and there like a, a couple of figures um i don't think he inked the whole page he was up there and uh, 
he inked a couple of figures towards the end. Um, and so all of a sudden, you know, we're on the schedule because somebody else's book was going to miss and Marvel couldn't lose the press time. They, you know, so even the end of that, the, like the last maybe 10 pages were a little bit more rushed than I would have liked it. Billy says, so that's how we got Vosburg. Yep. That's exactly how. Well, actually, no. Um, what happened there was, well, it kind of is, yeah, in, in, a, in a sense. Um, but the real story, or, I mean, yeah, by, by getting the book put on a schedule uh by issue two mike had done like you know he was doing his finished pencils up until like page five but like i said he he had finished pencil in the first one and then he had to kind of help in and and jump jump in and help me finish the ink so that that thing could meet their deadline and he was like about five pages in or three pages in or something on the second issue. And he did like the first five pages finish pencil. And then he went to layouts um, because his time was getting eat, eaten up. So that's why it went that direction. And it was, you know, it, it, it was not fun because we had just got off secret wars, which was a tough year. And we were really having a great time being able to <laughs> relax and do something like the Punisher, you know, kind of a, let's just call it a, I, I don't know if I'd call it a vanity project, but a project where we could kind of make every page as, as good as we could at that time. Um, and not have to worry about, uh, you know, producing so many pages a, a day, a month, a, you know. So when we got it done, it, it was done. I mean, we were still, you know, I mean, I would still keep that got to do a page a day schedule as did Mike. But uh, those little hiccups can really eat that time up fast. So. Mike went to doing layouts. I went to doing finishes. And of course, uh, you know, it's, it's not going to be the same look, um, because it's all rushed. And on issue four, uh, our editor, Carl Potts, a friend of mine, friend of Mike's, you know, uh, he got a little bit nervous and he didn't think Mike was going to turn the fourth one in, uh, on time to get the, the thing still not shipping late. So that's how we got Vosberg is uh, when Mike was still doing the fourth issue, he decided to, um, if I remember correctly, he even gave Mike a deadline and said, you know, I need the pages done by this day or I'm going to have to get a fill in on the fourth issue. I didn't know about this till after I was, into the fifth issue I literally got pages one day um, in the mail and a call the same day and Carl just told me uh, you're getting pages he said I just need you to ink the Punisher figures um, don't worry about the weapons don't worry about the backgrounds don't worry about secondary figures he goes I need you to just ink as much as you can every day that you get and turn it back in 
so that you know we'll we'll finish it up here so um and that was over Vosberg's breakdowns um and I did I was doing three or four a day and just sending them back and it was a blur and then I found out later you know that I think it was through Mike what had happened and that's also why you have Joe Duffy doing the scripting on issue five because Stephen Grant didn't you know he was doing a plot so when Mike got pulled off the book he he said I'm I'm not going to script it and I probably would have followed suit had I had I been that deep in it but I like I said I didn't know that information until after I'd already started so all right we are gonna put aside uh, bullseye and we're, we're we're gonna do some white splatter on on the bullseye at the end we'll have the finale <laughs> the, the fireworks the fireworks of splatter um, I'm just giving it a look I think it's all good to go as far as the inked sketch bullseye is always fun um, with the uh, you know with the little target on his head and it's kind of clever the way they put the rings around his uh, neck and shoulder area I think that's kind of a, a good costume design it's a little cheesy but you know what it's kind of cheesy in a good way I think um, so there's bullseye and I think what I'll do I'm gonna not go right to the Punisher I'm gonna see what I can do with this uh, cam it's a character I don't know uh, much about, except that she is uh, from a book called uh, Paper Girls. So my first time with any experience with her. Um, so I'm going to try to be true to uh, the best I can first time drawing somebody. That, uh, that I'm not familiar with. Anyway. Chad well, says, wow, Bullseye is looking intense tonight. Yeah, I got a... Uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting some snarls and stuff going, Kaz. Have you noticed that? Thanks for your tip there. And I got it on the Punisher, too. I got a, got a little teeth showing on him. Let's see. Okay, that is one. So this is Mac. Not 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 familiar with the characters, but uh, it's, like I said, it's from a series called I think Paper Girls. 
So some of you out there, maybe I'm just not. So I was having to Google this a little bit to try to figure out what Paper Girls is. Yeah. The uh, the coloring on that cover is cool. Right. That blue, the blue mm -hmm. pink, orange, or whatever that is. Does it does it have a sip not <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, one of those about, you know. Wikipedia. It's a mystery science fiction comic book series written by Brian K. Vaughn and illustrated by Cliff Chang, published by American company Image Comics. That's right. That's what I remember is Cliff Chang. And, man, he's a fantastic artist. Colors, this is Matt Wilson. Letter oh, wow. Designer is Jared Fletcher. Uh, Matt Wilson, I believe, is the guy that colors all of uh, Chris Omni's work, too. So good. Uh, I'm not familiar with the writer, but I am familiar with uh, Cliff Chang's work and also with uh, Matt Wilson. So that's why the art on this is uh, it's it may not be your cup of tea, but it's very it's it's good. It's very well done. Paper Girls follows the story of four 12-year-old newspaper delivery girls, huh. Aaron, Mackenzie, KJ, and Tiffany, set in Stony Stream, a fictional suburb of Cleveland, Ohio. While out delivering papers on the morning after Halloween, the town is struck by an invasion from a mysterious force from the future. The girls become unwillingly caught up in the conflict between two warring factions of time travel. Hmm. Interesting. I did not know that. Did I did not know that, Trebek. And it's not often I don't know anything. But it didn't say anything about this girl, Mac. So she's apparently, you, you had mentioned four girls, but not her. So she, I guess, is a supporting. No, nope. Mac is short for Mackenzie. Ah, okay. Dun, dun, dun. See, I learn something new every day. Because the lady you are drawing 
is on the cover. One of the four on the bike. With the pink hair? Well, I know, not pink hair here, but that's that's the color hair she does have. <laughs> so I know you're probably not. Huh? Looks pink. Yeah. Yep. Looks pink. Like she's always smoking in all of these pictures. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's... Uh, um, uh, I can't remember the guy's name who's getting this, but he, he did request, you know, if I could make her smoking... That would be a plus. So I get it. It's I guess it's part of her character. So not a problem. So Richard has another good question. He says, what comic character would you like to see adapted TV or movie that hasn't been seen on screen yet? Oh, I gotta think. Has there has there been one that hasn't been adapted? I mean, almost everything that I think of, it's like, yeah, they did that. Um, you can feel free to jump in too, Ron. It may spawn something in my head, but I'm. I I don't know. It seems like they've covered almost. I mean, unless you get real obscure, obscure. Which I guess that's part of the question. Um, I was going to say the question, you know, like as a follow up to my like, well, how about the question? But I think they have done a question TV show, didn't they? May have. See, so um, I know they did a human target, uh, I think, TV series. Uh, let's see who else. Um, oh, you know what? I'm well. I, I I'm gonna say it, but I probably it's been done. I was gonna, I was trying to I was not trying to but my mind was sticking all on Marvel and DC and I thought well gee you know it would almost be um a natural to do a to have a Tintin as a you know like an animated series but I think they even have done a Tintin movie like a live action fairly recent I believe Could be wrong about that, but I seem to remember something about it. Well, Kaz is thinking Modoc. For a TV series? <laughs> Billy says John Fade DEA from She Cat. There you go. Billy and I used to do the, uh, well, Billy was, I think, Bill, didn't you do interiors for Bill Black on uh, She-Cat? And I used to ink the covers. I think we did quite a few. I, I can't remember how many, but I'm going to guess any somewhere between five and seven. Now, watch me be wrong. It, it might have been three, but it seems to me like it was it was more than that. David says there was a CGI Tintin film. It was what he thought. <laughs> yep, see there, I, I kind of had a feeling that whatever I say, it's going to be like, that done that. Boy, that's a good question. Um, almost anything I can think of is, you know, I, I can pretty much... Man Thing. They've never done a Man Thing movie. But I think they did Swamp Thing. In fact, I'm pretty sure 100% they did a Swamp Thing. 
that was also a series. That's what I was going to say. Wasn't that even a TV show? That's that's what I was thinking of. Cat says the Beyonder. <laughs> He's stuck in Secret Wars. Cats is the Secret Wars man with the Secret Wars plan. That movie will get made one day. It must. Billy says uh, those covers written and penciled by him, the covers inked by you. Yep. How many were there? Does he remember? Alpha Flight. Hmm. Was that you, Ron, that came up with Alpha Flight? Yeah. If, if done in the style yeah. of gardens. Yeah, I could see that. Billy thinks there was four. Four. Yeah, it, it was somewhere four or five. I was thinking maybe more. Maybe maybe we did a poster that was not used for a cover. I don't know. I can't remember. Seems like that was so long ago. He said, plus there were some pinups. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Maybe I'm counting those in. Like I said, I think there was a poster done. Like advertise for an advertisement of the book. And then when Billy got his book to pencil at DC, they, they, I don't know if Image was up and running at the time, but they imagized it. His pencils are nothing like that. And they, uh, they, they put the West Coast style anchor on it. Using dual tone paper, he said. Yeah, we did that too. I forgot to mention, I picked up some Zipatone. Did you? Like some actual, like real Zipatone or the Japanese Zipatone? Japanese. Where'd you find that at or did you have to order it? Had to order it. Jet pins? No, I think I just went the lazy route and checked it out in the Amazon. Oh, okay. Well, I don't even know if Jet Pens has it. I was just guessing they might. Jason is in the room. He says, hey, guys. Hey, Jason. How you doing? Glad you could make it.
Jason's the man that got the uh, the Thanos and the Ghost Rider. And they are on the way to him. Billy says, Marvel and Matt banning ink my Punisher jobs instead of you. Yes. After I was promised them. But that's okay, because the editor that did that didn't... He had a short shelf life. <laughs> short shelf life. But I kind of knew it. I That guy was... Uh, Well, Jason said, yeah, he was at the comic shop. Lousy snow here in New York. He got the notification and he appreciates it. All right. Well, I appreciate you uh, coming in. I actually, this is, one of those things that um, um, uh, <clears throat> uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, I actually packaged them up and then realized I forgot to sign them, so I had to open up the package and sign them and re redo it. Ouch. Yeah. But at least I got it done. I, I am so glad I remembered it. Oh, Billy says he ruined the Punisher books and you weren't a gritty enough inker. That's right. Although I believe when Billy was doing the pencils and he asked for me, uh, the editor was, oh, yeah, you know, no problem. And, you know, all they got to do is give me a little art direction. I would have loved to have gotten a little grittier. It's all about vision. And I think an editor... A good editor should have a vision of what they want their books to look like. And, you know, they, they should be able to tell their talent, hey, uh, Mike Golden did it with me at DC. You know, he asked me to do certain things that, uh, that were just being a good art director. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, he had the impact line uh, as an editor as, as one of his duties. And um, he wanted uh, he wanted them to be, especially uh, like on the comic covers penciled by Michael Nasser. He loved Michael Nasser's work. He just thought that the covers were really over rendered for, uh, you know, those were, those books were aimed at kind of the tween age audience. And so he just asked me, could I tone the rendering down, you know, to simplify it? Like instead of three directions of feathering on a rib cage, could I just kind of do like a nice Joe Sennett one directional thing? And I was like, yeah, sure. So I gave it to him and, you know, they still look great. They still had Nasser's wonderful drawing uh, underneath them. They were just, you know. Not over inked. Billy said, keyword, good editor. Exactly. To what you were speaking of earlier with Jason, he says, laughing out loud, no biggie. I'd find you at a con if you forgot. I appreciate it. Oh, okay.
Well, once I remembered it, I, I, I couldn't, you know, it's one of those things that it would have bugged me. And then, and then I thought, did I sign the other ones? And as soon as I opened it, I realized I did sign, uh, the other one. I mean, as soon as I got the package open, I'm like, oh, I do remember signing this one. It was just Jason's were, you know, I had to I'd come over here with my white pen and sign them. Uh, so that's that's why I had forgot because I wanted to scan them first. And uh, it's kind of funny. Kind of funny and kind of not, but it all worked out. Thing always works out that's right hey michael has another great question he says has there ever been a project or request you just refuse to do hmm ah uh, boy refuse to do hmm thinking on that one aren't I refuse to do uh, I don't think I ever actually out and out refused to do a project I think there were projects that were offered to me that the project I was either working on or um I was already involved in a project and yeah, like I didn't want to leave it to, you know, it wasn't tempting enough to leave what I was on to, to go on to something else. It was just kind of like, eh, you know what, that's, I'd rather do this than that. So I, I think to that extent, that's probably about the closest on, on that one that, um, that I could think of is I just, you know, there was no, not enough interest to, take me from say project A to project B. Uh, the thing I did not like, and I, I talked about this before was when, when I originally, my second run on JLA, I, my first one, I did the first, uh, when I first got into business, I worked on, uh, JLA over George Perez's layouts and then I went on to ink Captain America and then I went back to JLA later with the promise that I would be inking Adam Hughes once a few fill-in issues were done that was something I actively pursued and Adam was actually kind of working his way so that he could do it as a monthly book. Um, I remember this, you know, uh, it was one of those deals where, you know, well, you know, we got to give Adam time, you know, we want you to ink it. He wants you to ink it, you know, whether he remembers or not, but that's neither here nor there now. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I, I wasn't a fan so much of the JLA, although they had the good characters, you know, they have the Trinity in it. And, um, you know, there's a few of the other characters I like, and it's kind of like, you know, it's like Marvel's Avengers. So it's a, it's, it's a worthwhile project to be on, you know, it's a, it's a good high profile, I guess. But so I had to go through five issues of a story arc, which, I did not really enjoy, um, but I did it. And then somewhere through that, uh, somewhere through that, I heard that um, Joe Rubenstein had started inking um, the issue that Adam had been penciling because Adam was not going to be the regular penciler on the book because he couldn't do a monthly. Now I'm not throwing Adam under the book because I'm just repeating what I was told. 
I have no idea. All I know is at that point, I was halfway through uh, my first year contract with JLA, and I figured, well, you know, <laughs> I may as well just stay on the book. And I went for a second year, you know, because like I said, it it was kind of fun. Um, what I did not like, though, is when they took the same contract and was they would bounce me from JLA to JLE uh, because I don't know that just during that 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 little period of time there, it seemed like nobody and it may have been. You know, it may have been because it was such a, a hard book to do with all the characters. None of the pencilers were able to stay on, on time. I mean, it was hard for me as an inker. You know, I it's it's a hard book. Any any group book is hard. Billy added in Linda Medley. Yeah, well, I didn't want to mention her name. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, she did a good job for what it was I mean for you know her her pencils were very uh, drawn I'll say that it was all there um, and it would be easy enough to look up the job the job would have been really good Adam did covers for it it was it was a riff on Captain America Kirby uh, the sleeper, the big robot thing. So it, uh, you know, I, I hate to say it, but with a different artist, I think it would have been a little more um, palatable uh, as, as far as it would have had a, a, if somebody would have aped Kirby a little more. Because I think that's what it, it needed. I think they needed to find somebody that wanted to do like a Jap, uh, Jack Kirby uh, riff. Michael says, following up, was there anything you regret passing on? Mm, actually, no, I think I've been pretty lucky in my, uh, in my career in that, like I said, I, you know, Captain America I, and, and maybe, you know, he may have missed this at the beginning. Um, or maybe, maybe it was just you and I talking, Ron, before I went live. You know, Captain America being my favorite character and Batman probably my second. Uh, I had two nice long runs with creators that I enjoyed working with on those, those two characters. And um, then the Punisher was a character I always liked uh, from the black and white magazines. I, I don't really remember him from Spider-Man. I was more of like I'd pick up those Savage Tales magazines where they'd have him painted on the cover and read the little black and white tales. And I can't remember the first time I actually <clears throat> realized he was the same character that was like maybe showing up in a oddball Spider-Man I'd pick up. Um, so mm, regrets, not really. I, I think actually I've been blessed to have the, uh, the the work um that i've had that's still you know influential today um and to work with the creators you know uh that i've 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 had a chance to work with meanwhile this cam piece for my first attempt, I think, is pretty nice. But it has me intrigued. 
yeah no it's it's a it's a nice change of pace and that's you know he he said he wanted to give me something you know like throw me a curveball if and and he said if i didn't have any interest you know let him know but when i saw this character it was kind of like eh, i i think i could do her <laughs> go ahead i i boy if that was not a nope. <laughs> thank you if that was not the perfect setup line though right Now, I, I do have to think, since Ashley gave me artist choice, that's becoming harder than I thought it would be. Because I, I don't know if I should do hero or villain, male or female. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of different... Uh, Ron just got fried. Ron? Yeah. You there? I'm here. Okay. Sounded like you just got fried. I hope not. I hope not, too. That's what I said. I said Ron just got fried. And then I didn't hear anything, so. You never know. It happens every now and then. Yeah, I know. Jason says, laughing out loud, you don't want to know what I said out loud after that. <laughs> All right, so I think we will. Uh, I am going to take a drink of water. I actually, I, I had a double shot. Uh, on the way on my drive back down here, so I'm just drinking water now. A double shot of LaCroix. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm out of LaCroix right now. I got to get some. I remember I bought the two. Uh, I'm still drinking the raspberry lime uh, Zephyr Hill sparkling water. Oh, you poor man. Actually, it's beginning to grow on me, but here's the deal. Here's what I like about the lemon LaCroix is it's the same thing I told you about the Coke versus Pepsi, Ron. It has that more like that dry, clean finish, you know, I think Coke has that more of a dry finish than Coke. Yeah, I have no idea about the whole finish. You know about it or you don't know about it? Don't know. That's because you're a Pepsi drinker. Hey, Jason says double shot meaning coffee. No, Jason, vodka. <laughs> Things are about to get really crazy on the Punisher. Yeah. It's going to get why It's beginning to hit me now. No, I actually knew that, you know, I've been up. I Literally, I got up at three this morning. Um. I still have a little bit. Ron, do you think it's got something to do with that really weird change of weather, like that 30 degree, we're in the 80s, and then we get to the 50s? I know a lot of people that have had this, uh, like a little dry, even on the stream I did Monday, you could hear it in my voice, and I, I mentioned it, that, um, you know, something was irritating my throat. I don't have a cold. I think it's, you know, when that weather changes, does it? knock some pollen around or something. I know it's kind of that time of the year also, but it's definitely that time. But you know what? It never really affected me. Um, I guess it's just getting older. So, you know, I just got to deal with it. Got to deal with getting older. Um, but I, I, I know other people that have, you know, um, that have said the same thing, you know, that they've had like this, like dry, scratchy throat, you know, but it's not a cold. Dun, 
There's that song I, it's that I'm humming. That uh, I was thinking that I wasn't going to bring it up. I yeah, no, I I I caught myself. Uh, and Sean knew it was um, Suzanne Vega. I don't know where I heard that and why it got back in my head, but and not that it's a bad song. It's just weird that you know that one out of anything kind of popped in hey ag hasn't came in has he, he is oh yes, wow he is. Evening gents. <laughs> man i feel like i'm psychic i just i swear to, i swear i did not know i i was opening up uh this zero one micron but i had picked up a, a double zero five and he had mentioned that micron now makes a double zero three and i didn't know that and I guess it's something, you know, something fairly new. He even said that they make it now. Uh, I just don't know. Like I told him in my comment back, I, I don't know what I would use something really. I mean, this is so thin, the, the 005, that the 003 must just be, uh, wow. I mean, I guess, you know, I guess there's. Well, I know there's people out there that are going to use it, so that's not the right statement. But I, I suppose that um, with the technology today, uh, you know, you can put a line down and it's it's going to get picked up by a computer. Uh, back in the day when they used to shoot metal plates and stuff uh, in the 80s and before, you know, you you would never put down a line that thin. And expect it to to print, or you kind of got used to the printing process, and you knew what you could, uh, you know, how to how to how to work your lines. That was the big, um, and, you know, that was the big deal when when they did go to um, to the flexograph uh, plates, which were plastic. The first run of comics that came out, and you know, we had no idea until we saw them. Were I, they dropped out like any line that was, you know, not really heavy, and or they got real wavy, you know, like your hand was like just shaky, 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 shaky. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was like you saw that, and you're already like two or three issues of ahead of what's coming out and you suddenly realize you have to adjust. Well, then the other catch 22 is by the time you've adjusted to heavier lines and whatever, you know, that gives them time to get it right. So can't win for losing on that one. All right. So here we Wait, have said it's like a, eyelash hair it's very easy to damage that tip i believe i yeah i bet it is um yeah i i guess i could see doing like very small figures with it um small faces i used to use like whatever the smallest rapidograph i think it was a beige or tan colored one maybe it was a zero zero one or something i used to use that for small faces Okay, so, uh, Mac, I don't know why I call her Cam. I have no idea. So we got Mac done, and for those just coming in, we have Bullseye, which is going to get some splatter, and... Hmm. <laughs> Let me see something here. That white pen I had out just kind of gave me an idea. I don't think I can get behind. I can't get behind him and do like a a bullseye. I don't have a template big enough to. I would do like a like a white round behind him. Could I fake it? Would it? Nah, it wouldn't look right. It would look like some weird oval. Okay, never mind. It was a thought. If only you had a collection of yard sale plates. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Gee, you know, 
You're welcome, Jared. <laughs> I I should probably look into uh, doing a little. Ron, we should go yard selling this weekend. It's on. We're gonna make him so jealous. <laughs> or buy up all the plates. Yeah. All the plates in Florida. All right. So we are now on to the last one of the evening, this Punisher piece. And this one is for Michael Brooks. You know, I'm I'm getting used to uh, my glasses <laughs> being uh, uh, like I said. I kind of just look underneath the lens, and when I work at my computer, I just scoot my chair back about another foot. AG was laughing, saying he was about to say, where are the plates? <laughs> and Michael Brooks is saying, it's happening. Yes, it is. You know, back to the plates real quick. I guess Jared kind of gets the last laugh, doesn't he? <laughs> when you can't add any circles? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I could freehand that thing. AG I'm, says it looks cool already. He loves that angle. Yeah, I thought it would be kind of cool. You know, I, of course, if you all may have noticed, I, I kind of am having my Punisher come out of the shadows or stuff like that. But uh, it's a bit of a cheat. But other than that, it's, I just feel the Punisher would kind of, you know, there's, there's that fear factor when, when he's in the shadow more so than when he's in the light. I know I wouldn't want like the Punisher after me, you know, in a dark alley. Jason also loves that Punisher. Well, thank you. Did you ever read uh, Punisher kills like the Marvel universe? No. Was that, uh, do you remember the writer? Was that a Rick Remender? Ooh, I don't know. I have to Google that. Because Rick's a buddy of mine, and but he came up with like the Punisher Frankenstein, and he, he gets some weird ideas, Rick does. But he's, he's, a, he's really creative. But I just don't know if I could. And you know what? There was a trade we were talking the other night, those of you that remember about the um, uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider, and there was a trade with just him, and I I skimmed a little bit of it, and I just could not pull the trigger on it. It's too... And I think Rick may have wrote that. This was it... Garth Ennis. Garth Ennis, okay. I, I think it was Rick that wrote wrote the uh, the Cosmic Ghost Rider, but I'm not 100% sure now. It could have been that Garth Ennis. Because I know he wrote a bunch of crazy... Well, when I say crazy, I mean just, you know, like taking characters and making them a lot different than what they normally would be. So anyway, long story short, I... I couldn't pull the trigger to buy it, but I did finally get the uh, the Mister Miracle trade um, on Comicsology. It was actually available. I guess they wait a week, uh, or or it was really weird. I got it for a dollar off because I ordered it before, and I was up to about almost midnight that night. But they don't give you the book until. You know, they'll charge your account, but then I think the time stamp was around 2.30 or 3.30 in the morning. So when I woke up, it was like, you know, you can download your book. 
but it was like a pre-order thing, which I thought was, you know, interesting because uh, I just went back and checked to see if maybe they had put it up and sure enough, there it was. And it was a buck off. So I think I paid like $15 for it. And I've read, there's like a little introduction um, drawn by Michael Norton and it, it's 12 or 14 pages and it kind of does a quick recap of the, the ideas behind Kirby's fourth world and, you know, kind of let you know how Mr. Miracle came to be, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I really enjoyed the, the quick, I mean, it, it was a very quick little read and, but it was very, very succinct and well done. You know, I mean, you talk about a nice little synopsis of, you know, here's, here's what you need to know to go into reading this. It's perfect. Although I got to admit it, it kind of made me want to go get the, uh, the fourth world stuff and read it. Um, so I might do that, but I want to get through the, uh, this Mr. Miracle thing first. Cause I, I had just bought Hellboy goes to hell. Have you read that Ron? I have not, but I heard you speaking of it. There's like three pages of watercolors in there that Mignola did that are just gorgeous. Did you see that Hellboy watercolor he put up on Monday? No, that was on Facebook. Uh, Twitter. Twitter. On Art of Mignola. I'll have to look for I, it. I retweeted it, or I no, I think I just commented to him that yeah, it was beautiful. Thanks for sharing it. Um, it's a real nice piece. No, on, on Twitter currently, I I started with only you. I know. Then I, then I followed <laughs> uh, Jared, Craig, yep. and Bushema. And uh, Palo. Oh, yes. Well, you had to follow Jared and Craig because when we get into our crazy tweet and you got to join in. You'll get sucked down that rabbit hole. We'll see. <laughs> Hey, that was, uh, I don't know if you saw it or not. That, that looked like a nice, uh, a nice, real nice job Jared did on that, uh, children's hospital. The, uh, room was cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess that had to be uh, fairly local by him for him to be able to to go by and work on that. It looked nice. He had the whole uh, Spider Verse going on there. Yeah, it was it was it was really cool. Uh, it was well done. Um, I know that at our uh, the Halifax Hospital here where I live. 
when you go through the emergency room, they they have a wall full of, um, and of course, it being next to the speedway, in a sense, they have a wall of uh, like kind of racing characters. I almost think that uh, I need to find something like that to go volunteer and tell them, hey, I'd like to do a mural in your kids, you know, because you can always, uh, you know, you do one for a good cause and then you, uh, the next person you can charge, you know, do one for a good cause, next one. You just say, you know, hey, I can do this for, for you, for your office. It's not a bad thing to think that way, right, Ron? I never really thought about it. <laughs> well, think about it, though. You know, you, you, yeah, no, you take your time. You know, you do something, you know, good for the kids and... Then you just make yourself available to anybody else, you know, that would that would be interested in maybe something similar. Uh, you know, like a private private practice or something. Yeah. You know, I think the one he did was, again, I don't know if it was a private practice or more like a... Uh, some sort of community center hospital or something. Uh, I'll have to ask him more uh, about it when we talk next. When he answers your phone call. That's right. See, he's, he, he got too big now. Old John Shop Liver Beatty. <laughs> <laughs> So, hey, since we got a group of people in here, and I see four likes, if you haven't liked it yet, I'd appreciate a, a thumbs up if you enjoy it. It's, uh, it's easy to do. little click of the mouse. I've had my... I, I finally got two... Thumbs down, Ron. So I'm I'm over that now. It finally happened. Mm -hmm. Well, for Jared, it was a uh, pedi pediatric clinic in Georgia. Oh, okay. Now, see, we have Jacobs where we take him, but they have like, man, it's, you know, it's multiple rooms. I, I don't know. It looked like Jared had done like like kind of one big room or something. Didn't look like a waiting room, though. It looked like an actual like examining room or something. Yeah, it looked like an exam room. Maybe he's got like 50 more rooms to do or something. I don't know. AG said you're probably due to have a couple trolls lurking around. Yeah, it happens. Uh, I knew it was just a matter of time. Um, it it really didn't. It, it bothered me for a second because I'm like, what's to hate? You know, it's like I'm just, you know. And then I was just like, eh, well, everybody, you know, uh, everybody.
everybody's going to just, you know, some people do it just to do it. I mean, that's why I did it. I that's mean, I think Jared did it. I'll blame him. He's not talking to you, so why not? Yeah. Hey, you know what? That's it. I think you're on to something there, Ron. I bet he's listening right now, cackling away. Dry washing his hands. <laughs> He did it because I accused him of, of getting me sick listening to his uh, his Longbox Crusade uh, live stream. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. And, and still hacking while he was doing it. Billy says, player hater. <laughs> That's right, Billy. Billy knows. Haters gonna hate, just like someone told me. That may have been AG that said haters gonna hate. John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. Now, did I tell you about uh, the Punisher getting a hold of the war machine armor? Uh, Punisher getting a hold, like wearing the armor? Mm -hmm. I think you may have mentioned something about it a while back. Did they do a series on that? Yeah. I was thinking we could probably get a bucket head Punisher out of the deal. <laughs> Did, but does his face actually show in that? No, it's just the war machine with a skull on the chest. That's what I, I figure. It's... Billy says, very Kevin Nolan-ish. Ooh, I'll take that. J. 
Jason said, Hot Toys are making a figure of that, referring to the Punisher War Machine. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, a toy probably is <clears throat> probably better than than a comic, right? <laughs> the toy might be cooler. Did you like that three finger spin on the paper there? Did you catch that move? That was too fast. Sheer that power. was that was like a little uh, hand jive uh, paper spin. A free hand jive. <laughs> Mike Cross wasn't here to enjoy that move. You never you know, know. He may have. He may. He may have. He may just be lurking, waiting for the right moment. Because you know it is payday tomorrow. I believe Thursday. He'll be. He'll be writing those checks to people. Cursing each one that makes more than him. Right? So Hot Toys, I see they sell a lot out of a... What is it? Side? Sideshow? Sideshow? I think so, yeah. I've seen some of those newer statues where they... they I mean... With the cloth capes and stuff, they're pretty insane. You probably have some, right, Ron? Not from them. I I have that one uh, Venom bust still waiting to ship. But have you seen the ones like with the cloth capes and stuff? I have. Ultra detailed and realistic. Yeah, it's like, and I think they're around anywhere from maybe three fifty on the low end up to six hundred dollars or more. Yep. I mean, they're incredible, but boy, that's some serious disposable income there. I was looking through their list this morning, looking at the uh, the clearance section. <laughs> I'm the surprised. Clearance, clearance section being the eighty dollar ones. Oh, okay, yeah. Or was it was it thin? It was thin. I wonder if it's ones. Was it ones that you think just didn't sell, or ones that they just don't? You know, they're just trying to move because they may have a few of them left. Maybe a bit of both. Uh, I think the material was vinyl. Oh, okay, yeah. And most of them were like Harley Quinn stuff. Really, that's interesting. The uh, the 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 new Harley Quinn or the old one or little mix. The the cartoon one. Ah, that's a shame. And they had them uh, inspired by, uh, I think Jay Lee did one. Jim Lee did one. Not right. I can't remember.
Jason said they made an actual Infinity Gauntlet. It lights up and everything, but it's around a thousand dollars. I've seen that. I've I've seen a picture of it. It's uh, it's pretty incredible. I've also seen uh, my man Louis sent me a picture of the um, Captain America shield. He's ordered a couple of them. That's it's like a battle damaged one, and uh, they look nice. But I, I don't know. It's it's kind of like I prefer the ones that aren't damaged. But it it is nice and. I think he ordered two, and I—I I don't even know if he knows what they retail for yet. He's got to wait till he gets his invoice. <laughs> and I just like okay. You know what's uh, funny is I don't really notice it until I watch the replay, the uh, sound of the paper sliding across this switch, board. Switch. Yeah, yep. yep. It's like funny when I watch the replay. I'm like, wow, that's that's really loud. I guess I'm just so used to hearing it. It you know, it, it doesn't really resonate with me until I, you know. Maybe I'm not talking or something and I'm just, you know, the paper's going around and around and it's like, wow, man, what was that? And then I'm like, oh, I just spun the paper. Right, darling? I just remembered you saw that. I did, finally. Good movie, right? Yeah, it was good. Yeah. A guy did a really good job. Malik, or Malik, however he pronounces it. At least I thought, I, you know, I thought he did a good job. I agree. I, I, I think he pulled off a Oscar winning performance. Unless they're going to give it to Brolin for his portrayal of Thanos. Or Cable. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Billy says John is doing the spin a Rooney with that paper. There you go. You got to work it. Mother told me last night. <laughs> the Spinneroni. I gave your mother the Spinneroni last night, Rebecca. I work it. <laughs> I work the Spinneroni. Ahem. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> well, it seems like uh, it seems like the seven o'clock stream time, no matter what day. Uh, although there was one, I guess maybe you know, it seems like maybe Friday nights get the bigger crowds. I'm happy to see there's 15 watching now. Um, but from what I can tell, it does seem like the the 7 7 p.m. slot is is a nice slot. I don't that one day that I think I started at 10 or 10:30. You you were working that day, Ron, but you were out running around. That was a good crowd in there in in that day too. So it just I don't know. I think it's just a matter of what people are doing, and you know you can try to figure it out. But uh, what I was what I was real happy about was um, Monday when I was inking the Mike Zach sketch cover. I only had a few people at any given time watching the actual live stream. But the great thing was that actually, because people watched it, you know, got comments going. And um, I, I just want to say, I always appreciate the comments. So even if you're watching this live, even if it's just a uh, good show, old boy, <laughs> old chap, <laughs> let's go to jolly old England. Now, you know, feel free to leave a comment. There is no right time. You just got to you just got to be on 24/7. Then you can rotate your audience as, as I rotate this paper, right? Right. Of course, it's not good for your health, but, <laughs> but ah, screw it. Need subscribers. I want to do YouTube for the rest of my life. I want I, I wanna be I wanna I wanna be invited to a, a show as a YouTuber. How about that goal? I think that's Jacob's goal. Oh, I know it's Jacob's goal. Because that actually does happen. You know, they, some of those YouTube, well, the real, real, real popular ones. I mean, like that Dan TDM guy that has probably 20 million watchers now. Um, you know, he, boy. He makes a living off of YouTube and then he goes on tour himself and sells out like auditoriums and talks about Minecraft and gaming and stuff. And uh, it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty amazing that, y y you know, that somebody can actually garner that much uh, um, from a YouTube channel that they can actually it becomes their job, you know, just doing videos. And then he does, like I said, he's been over to the States. He's from England. Um, you know, he's been over here doing like tours. So good for him. Uh, I don't know when he started and how long he's been at it, but um, I, I, I you know, I, I got to admit, Jacob was actually doing the, the only thing I had to tell him was, Jacob, you didn't introduce yourself. You know, he just like went right in. And uh, so then he, he stopped and said, oh, hi, this is Jacob. And, but other than that, you know, he's kind of he's he's watched enough that he kind of knows like the catchphrases and things to say or that type of stuff, you know? Um, and, and once he gets over that fear, you know, he's, he's good to go. 
that's why you'll see him like when I tell him that I started recording last night, he like gives me this look and goes, Oh, we, we can't, you know, no. And I said, well, we're already going, you know, What Jason says when he was a kid in the nineties, he was told that playing video games won't pay the bills. He says, yeah, right. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I know there's a lot of people out there that can say, you know, yes, it does. A friend of mine's son, actually, he's one of those guys that um, his son plays the games and looks for bugs and stuff. And I don't know what he makes, but he's got like every gaming system they send him the games. He's got like big screen TV. He's got his whole bedroom is just, I, I haven't seen it, but he's described it to me. He's like, mm, he might be 17 now, 17 or maybe even 18. But, you know, it's like, that's, that's what he does. He, uh, he troubleshoots the games and gives feedback. And I believe he is making his living doing that. And I always kind of, I don't know, I, you know, when, when I hear parents talking about um, not letting your kid have too much time on the computer and stuff, it's like, I, I get it if they're not getting out and doing anything. But, you know, if you tell Jacob, let's go for a bike ride, you know, he's up for that as much as anything, you know. Um but on the other hand, uh, he's also, you know, he's Mr. Computer. So whichever, you know, whatever, whatever he does, I'm, I'm behind him. He's already got that hand and eye uh, coordination. You should see him type, Ron. It, he wants to learn the proper way to type, even though he can type now like this weird. He uses this thumb and this thumb and forefinger, and, man, he can get around the keyboard pretty good. It's it's kind of scary, to tell the truth. <laughs> I had him type out. I, I asked him to type something out. He's like, what? I said, I don't know. And he goes, how about, hello, my name is Jacob. And I said, okay. And, man, he, like, banged it out of the keyboard and I was just like, you gotta be kidding me. I don't believe what I just saw. And I said, do my name. And he just like, all right. And boom, hello, my name is John. It was quite amazing to say the least, especially, you know, the way he was doing his fingers. It's not the proper way, but it worked for him. I'll have him do it for you. Well, well, I am interested. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's it's it is impress. It's an impressive little feat. Two thumbs, two finger typing. Yeah, and fast. Challenge him to a race. <laughs> but I but I'm also glad he wants to uh, he wants to learn the 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 proper way. You know, I think that uh, I think he'll kind of grasp it but hey if he doesn't he can still go back to his uh his uh, bastardization way of typing doug minch uh the writer uh he doesn't know how to type he types with one finger you know he's a t -t -t but he knows where the keys are so he can go fast I only learned to type when uh, American Online uh, was out. We get those free discs to connect onto the dial-up internet. Yeah. And You've I'm got like, mail. 
all my friends were on it and they'd all want to chat and I'd be like typing one letter at a time on my fingers <laughs> and I couldn't keep up with the conversations. Well, see, that's why I hate texting because I'm a one finger text and then I look for the, you know, the word when it pops up and then I tap it and sometimes they string together and sometimes they don't, you know, the rest of the sentence. And I just, it kind of frustrates me because I'm like, okay. I mean, I don't mind a few, but I know for some people texting, you know, it's, it's how they communicate. Yeah. the uh, You're voice good at text, it. Voice yeah. text. And I, I still just, I, you know, I still forget about that. Um, you know, like after I do the message, I went, wow, I should have just voiced a text to that. And, but the one thing I do forget is the, um, uh, the punctuation and stuff. And I don't know how it is on your Android, but I know like on my iPhone, I forget like how to do a line break if I want to start a new paragraph or something. But there is a way to do it. And maybe someone in the audience that's smarter than than me on that will remind me what it is. Because cause I, I totally forgot what it, what it is. What the command is to make it um, start a new a new paragraph and see I'm I'm thinking well gee when you're when you're starting a new paragraph you should just be emailing or having a, a, a real conversation on the phone but I get it you know some people are are you know that's the way they want to do Well, Jason says we all adapt to technology. It's amazing what we can do now. 3D printing. I was amazed when I first saw it. I I have yet to see that in in action. Even I haven't even watched it on a YouTube video. Believe it or not. Well, wait a minute. I take that back. I think I have seen it on a, a small thing on a YouTube video. But yeah, it 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 is amazing and. You know, it's it's not a phone we carry anymore. It's a it's a computer. A phone is probably the least of the functions it does now, right? Well, period, new line. Kaz came in to let you know how to do that. Period, new line. All right. I I knew there would be somebody out there who could who could feel that and I I probably should have thought of the good Doc Kaz. Well we've got Adam Weddle in the room. He says, Hi John, I was lucky enough to get a sketch today. I'm the yes. good I, I I remembered the name. Uh welcome Adam. Glad to have you on board.
Jason says, who calls people anymore? <laughs> That's right. And Adam, you are in time for the finale of Splatter. I I think that's going to be my. <clears throat> it's got to be my new gimmick. I I just every one I do, not every one, but every show, every one of these, one of them has to get some splatter. It's just got to. It's a thing, you know. Do you agree, Ron? Jason agrees with splatter. <laughs> I'm telling you, it is like I I like it. People love it. It's uh, you know, I just got to make sure I I find the right you know the right piece. I can't really do it on the uh, Mac piece. That girl splatter. Yeah, yeah well, I could, but it, it, I don't think it would look that good on that piece, but. On the bullseye and on this Punisher, yeah, we're gonna splatter in some. I guess it could be blood. Splattage, Billy Spl says. <laughs> there you go. Jason says it's like Gallagher. Yes. Ag said, "I got the first Deathlock. Good choice." Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what was nice. Uh, AG did a beautiful framing job on his death like. And then that other guy on Twitter that uh, did his father do the matting and framework on that Spider Man? I was just like blown away by that. <laughs> like, it was nice colors. It was like it was like a double mat and a, a, a nice wooden frame. It's like it was really, you know, I'm like, wow, dude. Adam says he's a big fan of that Cap 286 cover you did. Loved it since he was a kid. Demon, yep, that's one of my favorites. I think that's the one he's talking about. Or is it? Oh, no, no, no. He's a Deathlock guy. I was thinking of, I forget which one. Yeah, I know the one you're talking about where Cap is in the site. That is a good one, too. In fact, see, that was back in the day where, you know, Marvel even made that into a, um, a a black and white. Maybe it had a little bit of spot red or something on some lettering, but I don't think so. Um, they made it into like a, a poster for comic shops. And it was just, you know, I don't know. It's just something about that nostalgia. Call me old. But, you know, I mean, I'm sure you have nostalgia for certain things, right, Ron? That, that Absolutely, I think we all do. You know, but for me, it's like Tom came by today, and uh, that's a guy that does the Daytona show, and we were talking, and he had a box, and 
I had totally forgot about this. And uh, at the Daytona show back in November, there was a guy that had a bunch of old Dennis the Menace comic books. In fact, when this ink's drying, I I want to grab one because I want to read something to you all out of the back. But anyway, he had a the the guy had just a bunch of loose Dennis the Menace comic books on his table, and they, they were like really cheap, like a dollar or two a piece. And I was busy doing something, and somebody called me away, and I didn't get back to the table. And when I when I got back, the guy was packed up and gone, and. So I figured Tom would know who it was. And uh, the next, after the show, like a day or two after the show, we were talking because I, I literally had forgot about it. And I asked him, I said, oh, I said, Tom, who was the guy on this row? And he, he literally, his setup was just loose books on a table. And he had a couple of long boxes full of stuff. And he was blowing it out. And some of it was really high-end stuff, but these Dennis the Menace books were just, he had them, and I think he also had maybe um, uh, Sad Sack. I don't know if you'd even know the character Sad Sack, Ron, the military comic thing. Not positive, maybe if I saw it. Um, and so he was blowing these books out, and like I said, I, I meant to go back and pick out the Dennis the Menace books and buy them. And he got gone. And so I told Tom who he was next to. And I said, he did not have a sign. He didn't have anything. I, and Tom goes, oh, yeah, that's whoever it was. So Tom brought me about 30 copies of Dennis the Menace, uh, old Dennis the Menace books. And some of them I had as a kid. Um, and it, it, it it's just great i mean there's some cool stuff and i i picked one up and i started reading in the back uh, about how they actually make the comic book that they're reading but there's something of interest i think that that this will put everything into a maybe a bigger perspective um that's why I want to I want to read it because it it kind of shows you um, what's happened or maybe what hasn't happened, what did happen. But I'll get to that. I'll I'll, I'll get back into it somehow. Okay, so now I can get my bigger brush out. Whoa, come here, you. Punisher tried to escape me. Ron, I've been playing some chess on chess.com in the morning. Okay. My 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 rating is down to like a mid 500. <laughs> it dropped fast. There are some people on there that, and you know what? I see this checkmate coming every time. I see it and I I I think because there were a couple times the person I was playing missed it. I took a chance on making a move that would better my position, but it's an easy checkmate, and I and I can see it and I can block it. But sometimes I take the chance of them not seeing it. It's basically when you castle and you got your king like stuck behind the pawn, and your rook is gone. It's just your king and maybe three pawns, you know, so you're stuck in that corner. And I can see they've got a clean line and I can't block it with anything with their rook or, or, or a queen. 
You know what I mean? You with me there? And yeah. so, I mean, I see it there and I'm just like, but I see a move that if they don't see that move and make me, then I might have a better chance at, um, uh, uh, you know, winning the game. So I've taken that risk a lot and seems like people are seeing it. <laughs> but I, I still did it today, even though I was playing uh, like somebody that was a 600 something. You know, I was just like, yeah, you know what? Maybe I can. I was like, if I can get this move and that move, then I can get my king out of trouble. I just I needed to get them in check to buy myself. I, I mean, I could have got it out, but I would have had to sacrifice a piece. And I'm like, well, you know what? Maybe they're not paying attention and they're going to like, you know, I'm going to become a threat. So I'm going to make this move and they're going to forget about that easy checkmate. And uh, because it, it actually worked a couple of times, I actually, you know, the person missed it. But I found that uh, lately I haven't had that luck. People are t a little too sharp. So, needless to say, now my rating on Lee Chess, I got it. I got it back up to eleven hundred, and I left it there for a while to go play at chess.com because I hadn't in a, in forever since that last game we played when you uh, when you put me on tilt. All right. <laughs> that game is still like you know I look at that thing and I'm like, and I know. I know now from watching a few videos, what I did wrong was I totally stripped you of everything but the king. And that's not really, from what I understand now, that, that's not good play. Maybe you knew that. I thought, man, I'm just going to clean off all these pawns and it's just going to be me against that king. And then I find out that the hard way of course that man there's traffic jams if i move here it's going to be a stalemate if i move here it's going to be a stalemate. and i also found out it does have something to do with uh you know your your rating that's why you got points because i was higher rated at the time and i did and i had like all your all your pieces but your king so i was up in material as they call it <laughs> and um, so, yeah, that's why I lost so many points. You would think that even at a stalemate, it would just be like a draw where it would be no points exchange. But that's not the way uh, it's not the way it works. <laughs> I've also found that um, most people now are going to like the. Uh, more of the blitz, you know, the faster chess games, like 10 minutes instead of the two or three hour, especially the online players. Everything's quick. I probably just want to get in, play a game, get out, whatever they're doing. And, and right. that's what I do. I, I've actually even played because I'll go into the 10 minute games and I, I know I'm, the only time I take 10 minutes is if if I get in trouble and I slowly work my way out and I just happen to use that clock, but most of the time I'm, I'm maybe five minutes. If that sometimes three. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, uh, I'll, the worst thing I do though is like, play a game or two I'll, I'll reach over when I first wake up and just grab my iPad and to wake up I, I'll play like a game or two and that's <laughs> that's just like the worst because I'm not even seeing straight you know it's like uh, I'll be looking at the left or the right hand side of the board and and I'll forget about some 
uh, a piece that I've got over there just hanging. And all of a sudden I'll hear click and I'll be like, what was that? And I'll rewind the play and I'll be like, oh, I didn't know I had one of my nights. So it's still parked over there. I, I thought it was gone. And I'm like, well, it is now. That is a great looking Punisher. Yeah, I um, you know what you can't see on because it's small is his. Let me see if this is probably not. Is you can see his eyes. Uh, you know the actual down here you can't really notice it. Um. But uh, I'll tell you what, this has kind of been interesting because it's forced me to, this is my third Punisher when I said I wouldn't do any. And I've liked something about all of them. Now, yes, am I hiding him in shadows? Yeah. But do I feel that it's part of kind of, for me, what makes the character? Yeah, I, I think I would always... Uh, you know, keep him very, very dark coming out of the shadows or, or you know, in the shadows and stuff. So uh, that's that's not even a concern. Um, it's almost like, you know, I mean, I reverse Batman out sometimes if I do his, he's a different different look though. If I do like his cowl real open, I'll do the background black and sometimes I'll do him very dark and leave the background white. But this one, when I sketched it out today, I, I had the idea in my head to do this three quarter upshot with kind of a split lighting on his face and then come down to the skull on his chest as a read. Um, just so you get, you know, so you don't have to write the Punisher. But there we go. We're going to let that dry. I want to grab this book, uh, this Dennis and Menace book. I think everybody in the room, because we're, we are comics fans, I, I think it could be. I, when I read it, it, it literally blew me away. And I, I have no reason to disbelieve what it said and it, it just it's kind of a statement on the industry today versus the industry this book was printed in 1970 um so even as far back as 1970 or you know maybe it wasn't so far away uh let's see if you were if you were born in 70, you're, you're not quite 50 yet. So I was born in 61. So see, I, I was like nine years old when that book came out. I would have had no, <clears throat> I know what I'll do real quick is get the white ink ready for the kapow, kapow, kapow splatter party. Wow. Well. Cats like splatter. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> That's right. Pew, pew. Hey, thanks, Mike. I appreciate you. Adam loves that angle, and AG says it's very sinister looking. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Uh, my my Punisher game has uh, has definitely gotten stronger by doing these. I've gotten a little more confident as before I, I really had no, uh, I mean, I, I would have refused to punish her. I think it was, uh, Sean that got the first one and I did it because he, he had been very, you know, very good and stuff. And as a, as a person that was helping spread the word about what I was doing and I felt like, you know, I'm, I'm going to give it my best attempt. And he had an alternate, but I just figured Punisher was his first choice. So 
I had to, I had to step out on that ledge for him because he had been, you know, he'd been kind of like you, Ron, pushing and, and, you know, rooting for me. And I felt like, okay, you know, got to, got to give it a shot. So that must have sounded weird. I was drinking that water and talked right into the cup. All right. Let me, let me grab this book. All right. So David said he's heading out for the night. He loves that Punisher. All right. So I, I just like this cover too. It's the the Summer Funner, 1970, 25 cents for, uh, you know, a big magazine, how to make your own golf course, how to make a life-size posters of Dennis and his pals. Um, this is interesting down here. Dennis the Menace, created by Hank Ketchum. This was done by a studio, I forget the people, uh, who actually did the artwork and stuff. It appear it, at this time, appears in over 700 newspapers in 43 countries and 14 languages. That's like unheard of today for a strip. But um, I'm going to take this off the table real quick because it's it's actually already dry. But um, just to make sure, I'm going to lay it down on the ground next to me. What was really interesting was this in the back. It's the cookie jar. And I think they have this in most of the issues. Uh, and it's Inside Stories of Dennis. And this one was how these comics are made. So it goes and it tells basically about, you know, from writing to drawing, uh, the size of this book. And this is another interesting thing. It says it's six by nine. And these boards that I use are six by eight. So they might mean the interior art, but... Really, if you think about it, these head sketches I'm doing are about the size of a comic book. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's kind of interesting. But this was the one that, you know, they go into the plates of the printing press and stuff. But uh, where was it? Um, let me find where I read this because... Uh... Okay, here we go. Number five, when it talks about the plates of the printing press and stuff like that, uh, it, it, we'll, we'll get over that. It just says, a printing press prints 30,000 comic books in one hour. And we usually produce about 500,000 copies of each book. So that means a half a million back in 1970 and I guarantee that half a million or close to it they said approximately or around that that number yeah we usually produce 5,000 copies of each book so I would guarantee that that half a million copies of this book was bought to read not to put away somewhere and collect so I think the lesson that I kind of you know, that I took from that versus what we get today is that half a million was actually true readers, people that were um, putting out for this, you know, like I said, this is a square bound one. That's why it was a quarter. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, so you, you, you look at the comic book runs today uh well, they used to be in the millions, but that was a false market. Nowadays, I think if your book sells 20, 30,000, 40,000, you've got like a big hit. David, if I missed you, I'm sorry. Uh, I was reading that little snippet. Uh, thanks for stopping by.
And uh, yeah, we're going to get to the pew, pew, pew splatter time. Jason is right. So we can uh, wrap this up. And uh, everybody can do what they were going to finish doing the rest of the evening. For me, it's clean up a little bit here in the studio with ink and water and get some sleep. So I'm going to, this worked good last time. Actually, I think I'll use the masking tape, save that blue tape. That's uh, a little more expensive. Yeah, oh. AG. Huh? I, I found an inflation calculator. Right. The 25 cents in 1970 was a buck 58 in 2017. But comics were not being a buck 58. They're 3.99. Right. And they're not selling or they're not Now that, you know, they print about a half a million they said, but I guarantee they were probably, you know, those were returnable because those were on newsstands, but I just think, you know, I got to believe that if they're if they're printing that many, they are probably selling the majority of them. That's just my thought on it. It just kind of was a, a real, like, you know, interesting. I was reading that when I got that number. I was just like, wow, you know. Um, oh, I think they'd be selling a lot if they were charging a buck fifty-eight. Well, yeah. Uh, I don't think they can afford to, you know, <laughs> to charge that. Okay, splatter time on bullseye. Let's go right for the bullseye first. Boom, there, got it. I feel, you know, I could have some firework sounds. Those, those you can't really copyright, right? I could probably find some online. Yeah, you should be able to. That could be kind of cool. Or a machine gun. Actually, they have that for on YouTube. They have like a gun, a gun blast. I can just get that little spot off his nose. Dennis the Menace, five hundred thousand a, a copy for, and they they did twelve issues a year. Although it was really funny because I did read that they did, they did not publish in like I think it was October, November, and December. But what they did is they had those uh, summer specials like that one, which were um, published twice a month. Which makes sense, you know. Kids are kids are in school in November or uh, September uh, or October, November, December. In the summer, they're out of school. All right. I want to do one quick little. Give him a little more um, uh, brow wrinkle. Clean this up a little bit. May as well since I got the white out working. And ta da! Bullseye. All right.
we'll put him back there to dry. Let's bring up uh, Mac one last time just for viewing. Um, first time I ever heard or drew this character, but uh, interesting. Had a good time. I like working in this type of more of a cartoony uh, style. It was a lot of fun. And now it's time to get bloody. Dun, dun, dun. Let's give me a corner first. Okay, another corner. It's going to throw this way. There we go. All right, I need this one to be, yes, a little bit bigger. Punisher's been doing a little wet work. Okay, there we go. I think we will call that, let me get it away from that black where it doesn't uh, interfere so much. Well, out of your three Punishers, I think this one's my favorite so far. Yeah, it could be. I think with each one, I I kind of uh, open it up. I gained confidence. I kind of, you know, let let loose of, you know, not trying to be my exec. <laughs> I think that was a big, uh, you know, a big fear of mine is that people were expecting Mike Zach and hey, I'm not Mike, I'm John. So, well, I hope everybody liked tonight's stream. Um, on your way out, if you haven't already, <clears throat> thumbs up. And uh, if you have a comment, please come back and leave it below or leave it when this is over. If you have any questions, please ask. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate you. Uh, getting in on the sketch up and uh, I'll be uh, signing this and mailing it out to you. Um, I usually do that on Mondays. Uh, this Monday was a holiday, so it was Tuesday, um, but I will get it out as soon as possible. And uh, since I, I go through the click and ship now, I put your email address in, so you should be getting a, when I send it out, you, you should be getting like the little thing that comes from the click and ship so you can track it. Thank you, Dr. Kaz. Thank you, Richard. I appreciate you coming, uh, coming tonight and maybe we'll see you again. AG, always a pleasure. Jason, thank you very much. And, uh, I think, um, let's see, what is it, Wednesday? Uh, 
depending on what's going on tomorrow, I might do, let me see what I got left. Um, I don't think I have that many left except for the new ones I took today. And I got to get those organized, but um, let's see. I have one, two, that's it. I have two left. So you know what? There is a good possibility that those will get completed tomorrow. Um, I need to find out uh, uh, what I'm going to do for Ashley. I need to uh, come up with a character. And for Sean, I'm going to do a vampire Batman so you can be sure that that's going to get splattered. All right. So, yeah, I got two left. So tomorrow I will probably try to get on those and, and that will finish up. Let's see. That was um, when did I take these on? That was on the 10th. That was uh, 10 days ago. And I've been working on them on and off since. So everything that I've done on those that I took, they are they are now done. So I've got two left. So we are in good shape. Good shape. All right. So everybody, thanks again. Uh, Adam, good to see you. Uh, if you Adam, I I take it you're probably subscribed to the channel. Uh, if not now, then uh, you'll get a notification. And I usually do tag um, if you're on uh, Twitter. I'm there at John Beatty Art uh, or Facebook. Don't use Facebook as much as I. Well, I kind of do, but I've been hitting the Twitter lately. Um, it seems to be. A little bit faster for me. Um, Facebook just seems to have too much clutter in it, in a sense. I don't know. Anyway, if you're subscribed, you'll get a notification. And in that notification, if you look at what's coming up, you'll see the little hashtags like underneath the view screen now. And um, on those hashtags, I usually put the characters of, of what I'm going to be doing. So if you see your character come up... Um, then you'll know that uh, that's one you should be watching. And if you do happen to miss it for some reason, the great thing is they're archived for for watching. Um, so your Deathlock will be uh, will be the second one that I've done on a live stream. So I'm looking looking forward to it. And Deathlock Deathlock's probably going to get some. Uh, some splatter may not be white maybe the uh the ink all right everyone uh i'm gonna call it a night uh it's getting getting a little bit late i gotta like i said i got some cleanup time to do here and uh and then get home and uh time to take jacob to school tomorrow morning so thanks again and uh i'm gonna check out now I will see you all later. Take care.